Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be covering regulation of transcription and translation topic from the A-level biology curriculum. So let's get started. So first, looking at transcription factors. So in eukaryotes, transcription of target genes can be either stimulated or it can be inhibited uh, when specific transcription factors move from the cytoplasm into the nucleus. So when we are forming a protein or a polypeptide, uh, first what we do is we transcribe uh, the gene. So we go from DNA to mRNA and then that mRNA can be translated into the polypeptide. But before all of this happens, what we have is a specific transcription factors. So this specific transcription factors will move uh, from the cytoplasm into the nucleus and will bind to the promoter region, which we'll come on to later. And this will begin the uh, transcription of that gene. All right, so just be aware that genes are only transcribed when they are switched on. So we looked at genes being switched on or off. So just remember that genes will only be transcribed when they are switched on. And uh, now genes are switched on when the transcription factors will bind to the promoter region. So the promoter region is the key here. So what essentially happens is we have the promoter region in a gene and the transcription factor comes along and it will bind to the promoter region. And what this does is, for example, if we were coding for a muscle cell, what it will do if the muscle cell was switched off, if the genes were switched off, then the, then the transcription factor binding to the promoter region will basically turn on the gene so now that the muscle cell can be coded for. So we basically stimulated the transcription of that gene uh, by the transcription factor binding to that promoter region. For the AQA specification, you're required to know the role of estrogen. So estrogen is basically a steroid hormone. So what I mean by steroid hormone is it's lipid soluble. So what it means it can pass through the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane into the nucleus. So here we have estrogen and here we have the plasma membrane, the cell membrane and the nuclear envelope. And because estrogen is a steroid hormone or it's lipid soluble, as you can see, it will simply just pass through both of these membrane. Now when it has passed through uh, the membrane it will bind to the complementary receptor. Um, so as you can see here we have the estrogen and it has passed through the membrane and now it's going to bind to its complementary receptor which is the ER alpha receptor. You don't really need to know that but this receptor is also uh, an inactive transcription factor. So it's just a transcription factor uh, which is inactive now uh, and by binding by estrogen binding to that receptor it will change the shape of the receptor it'll change the tertiary structure of the receptor and now this uh, receptor this transcription factor uh, will be released from the protein complex but when it is released it will no longer be in its inactive in inactive form so now it's gone from an inactive transcription factor to being a activated transcription factor now. So, so what happens now is that this activated transcription factor or, or the estrogen receptor will bind to the promoter region uh, of the target gene. Uh, and this will stimulate RNA polymerase uh, to transcribe the target gene. Remember this en enzyme, it's not DNA polymerase, it's RNA polymerase. And so we have the activated transcription factor, which is going to bind the, to the promoter region uh, in the gene. So this promoter region is located in the gene and this will cause RNA polymerase. So this enzyme to be stimulated, uh, which can now carry out transcription uh, of, that, of, of this gene. All right. So now looking at epigenetics. So epigenetics is environmental changes that can cause heritable changes. So by heritable changes, we mean the changes can pass on from the parent to the offspring. And these changes occur in the gene function. So by gene function, we mean how this could affect the phenotype. 
so the hair color or the eye color and these changes occur without changes to the base sequence of DNA so before when we've looked at uh, changes in gene function it has been for example due to a mutation which can change the base sequence of DNA but in this case we do, we don't have any change to the base sequence of DNA all that changes is our epigenome which will become more clear later on uh, and, and these are just basically environmental changes so these changes again won't be due to uh, changes in base sequence of DNA now uh, there's two things that you need to know so inhibition of transcription uh, can occur by two uh, things basically which is increased in methylation of DNA or decreased acetylation of associated histones and um, we'll go through both of these in more detail now so first looking at increased methylation so by methyl methylation what we mean is addition of a methyl group so methyl group uh, is just a CH3 group so carbon uh, and three hydrogens and these methyl groups are being added to DNA uh, and this is being done at cytosine bases but just remember that these uh, methyl groups are being added to DNA now looking at this image so we have the gene or the DNA and what we're simply doing is just adding these methyl groups and uh, to the DNA uh, so what happens is increased methylation condenses the DNA uh, so here we have our normal DNA and when we in when we increase the methylation or when we add methyl groups to our DNA it'll just condense the DNA so as you can see here it's become more packed now and because of these methyl groups now this can basically prevent transcription in two ways so first just preventing the transcription by preventing the transcription factor binding to the DNA so by increased methylation uh, the the methyl groups will be preventing the transcription factors uh, from binding into the promoter region in the gene and in the in the DNA so our transcription can occur and the second way is it attracts proteins which condenses the DNA so as you can see here we the, the DNA is much more condensed now because of this we can prevent transcription because for example if our promoter region was here then the transcription factor could just easily bind to that promoter region but now looking at our condensed DNA so if our again if our promoter region was here then it's become much harder for, for the transcription factor to bind the transcription factor does not have access uh, to that promoter region and that that can uh, prevent transcription uh, occurring okay so now looking at decreased acetylation of histones so by acetylation what we mean is adding acetyl groups to histone so remember histone is the protein complex which the DNA is associated with so by acetylation what we do is we add uh, the acetyl groups to the histone so just remember that it's the histone this time it's not the DNA like it was uh, with the methyl groups so adding acetyl groups to the histones what it does is it unwinds the DNA uh, so just remember it's the opposite this time so increased methylation can condense the DNA but adding acetyl groups uh, would unwind the DNA so here we have the uh, DNA and the uh, and, and the histones and when we're adding acetyl groups we're not adding it to the DNA but rather to the histones so the proteins uh, which the uh, DNA is associated with so adding acetyl groups to histone would unwind the DNA uh, so we do the opposite instead because we want to condense the DNA so here we have a very loose DNA histone complex so for example if we were to have a transcription factor come in on to this promoter region it can easily uh, access that promoter region but now if we were to remove the acetyl groups so these acetyl groups from uh, the histones then we would be making our DNA uh, more condensed so as you can see here 
and because of this uh, the DNA histone complex becoming more condensed what it means is that the transcription factor can't uh, access the site or the promoter region as the histone comes in the way and this could decrease uh, the transcription of this gene okay so now looking at development of disease so we'll be looking at cancer as an example so first to look at this we need to know a few genes so first looking at tumor suppressor gene so this is a gene which can inhibit uh, cell division so it does what, what it says so it will inhibit cell division and because of that it will inhibit uh, the growth of a tumor it will uh, suppress a tumor growth and uh, so looking at a diagram so what it does is when it when this gene is coded it will produce a protein uh, which will stop cell division from occurring uh, so that cell division is controlled uh, and we don't end up uh, forming a tumor from that now looking at another gene and um, this gene is called the proto oncogene so this does the opposite this stimulates cell division uh, and if a mutation occurs in the proto oncogene uh, this can become a oncogene so it's going from a proto oncogene into a oncogene if a mutation occurs and because of this mutation oncogene would lead to uncontrollable cell division so before this is stimulating cell division but in a controlled way but when it turns into a oncogene from a proto-oncogene we will have a uncontrollable cell division the cell will keep dividing and uh, which will end up forming a tumor so how is this related to cancer so if there's increased methylation or decreased uh, acetylation of the histone which is associated with the tumor suppressor gene then um, as, as what happened before and uh, our DNA histone uh, complex would be very condensed like you can see here um, and because of this the transcription factor would be unable uh, to bind to the promoter region so if the promoter region was here it would struggle to bind to that because uh, the the histone is coming in the way and uh, so the transcription factor does not have uh, access to the promoter region and because of that transcription of the tumor suppressor gene would not occur the gene would be inactive uh, and because of that we would have increased in cell division leading uh, to the tumor formation because we can't code for the protein which would stop and the cell division from occurring so we would keep dividing until we form a tumor okay now looking at the other side uh, so if there's decreased methylation now uh, or increased acetylation of the histones now looking at the oncogene so remember oncogene stimulates cell division so if we have that then we would have a more looser um, DNA histone complex which is less condensed this time uh, so because of this the transcription factor can easily bind to the promoter region so let's say the promoter region was around here the transcription factor can come and easily bind to the promoter region uh, in in this uh, and the transcription would occur more frequently uh, and because of that and um, we would end up having more proteins uh, which which would stimulate the cell division and therefore there would be an increase in cell division and therefore an increase in uh, the tumor formation okay so finally i'm just going to be looking at rna interference so first we have single stranded rna as we know it turned into double stranded rna so we get a single stranded rna and we will turn that into a double stranded rna which we can refer to as a dsrna now this double stranded rna can be broken down by enzymes into small interfering rna uh, now we we bre breaking it down but it's still going to stay uh, double stranded so as you can see here uh, it's just being broken down uh, but we still have uh, the double stranded rna and we can call this small interfering rna or siRNA. now the siRNA 
will be broken down into single-stranded uh, siRNA uh, and the single-stranded siRNA is going to be now associated with an enzyme so now so what we do is we will get the siRNA and we will uh, now turn that into a single strand so just imagine them as being two separate strands so this is one strand and this is the other strand and they're separated I know it's not very clear uh, in the diagram but just imagine them as being separated and this is associated with an enzyme so let's say that this is an enzyme now so what happens next is the siRNA enzyme complex can be bound to mRNA and this will hydrolyze it so we can get the mRNA from, which will be coding for uh, a polypeptide or a protein and this siRNA so this single stranded siRNA can bind to the single strand uh, the single stranded mRNA uh, and this will just destroy the mRNA it will hydrolyze the mRNA so because it's hydrolyzed the mRNA so that mRNA will not be translated anymore so we will not produce the polypeptide because of that just as a note instead of using siRNA they might use uh, miRNA um, but they basically do the same job 